Psalm 72. A psalm for Solomon. This is David writing to his son. We're at a point where there's a joint throne. David's old in his age. He has made Solomon king in his stead. And before David dies, he sees his son get put to the throne. He prays for his son for the throne. And he writes his song for Solomon to be on the throne. So this would be one of the last words of David. And the psalm ends, this is the words of Jesse have ended. Give me, give the king, would be Solomon, by David who, partial king now, the father of Solomon, give the king thy judgment. And you're also going to see Solomon here, a type of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ comes and reigns, he's going to be the king of the kingdom, the Lord of lords. And when Solomon takes the king, the throne of his father, it is his responsibility to judge. And one of the great first acts that after the prayer of God giving Solomon a blank check, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. He says, listen, I want wisdom. I want to know how to deal with your people. And we get the wonderful judgment of the two harlots and the two babies. To be a leader of a nation requires judgment. And one, one of the things that this nation did when we became away from England, we're not going to have no king. Yeah, I know. You're not ever going to settle for Jesus Christ to be on the throne. You got Christians out there, they want a Democrat. You got Christians out there who want a Republican on the throne. You can't get them together. When God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit take the throne in Jerusalem, David, they're going to be all in one. There's no individual three parties. And he says, judgment. And we're also going to see from David here, who is king, we're going to see the offices of what the king does. Oh God, that's David's God. Man after God's own heart, David recording this. And thy righteousness unto the king's son, Solomon. David king, Solomon. And Solomon and David are Old Testament saints that have a particular promise. The sure mercies of David. David couldn't lose his soul. I mean, he murdered and he committed adultery. And he didn't lose his soul. And God spoke to David through the prophet. He says, listen, Solomon is my son. And I'm never going to give that up. And if he goes against me, I'm going to chastise him with, with rods, and I'm going to I'm going to correct him, which he, which Solomon does, and God does. But Solomon does not lose his salvation, though he went after all the goddesses and went after the temples and the gods. Solomon was given the same degree that I have today. Psalm, Solomon was adopted into the family of God. I'm adopted into the family of God by Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. He, and again, this is going to be God, Jesus Christ, and this is going to be Solomon. And so somebody who write, who marks his Bible, I have a hard time marking who's God and who's not God because it's, here's the thing. He shall judge thy people. Who? Solomon. Thy people. Who? Israel. He shall judge thy people. He, who? Jesus. Who is he going to judge? The Israelites. And where? Their kingdom, the millennial kingdom, in the promised land with Jesus in Jerusalem on David's throne. We're up to 72 Psalms. And have we not gotten a, 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 a satisfaction and not even... There's so much more in the song. Prophecy. One day Jesus Christ is going to be the King of the Kings, the Lord of Lords, the King of the Jews. That Pilate put under, above his cross. 
That hasn't happened yet. He shall judge thy people with righteousness. That's definitely Jesus Christ. Solomon gets the, the, the wisdom and, and understanding from God. But he makes errors. He's a human. All have sinned and come short. Even, even that's the one who wrote. All have sinned and come short of glory of God. Solomon wrote that. He makes errors. I mean, what would have happened if, if he said, okay, pull that sword and, and strike that baby in half? And the love of the mother, oh, no, you know, her half. And everyone's like, no, no, please save that baby. I mean, he was put on the spot, but that was God. I can assume that Solomon made mistakes. He made the biggest mistake. He disobeyed the word of God. He multiplied gold. He got horses out of Egypt. And he married multiple women. So even he couldn't have the righteous judgment to say, well, this wife, she worships other gods. In the New Testament, the Christians are, hey, if you're going to get married, there's no sin in getting married. But it's got to be only in the Lord. When you get somebody, I know somebody who married an un, un, unsaved believer. Uh, oh, unsaved believer, wow, what was that? Married an unsaved disbeliever and had troubles and asked me, well, you know what? You're the one that defiled the Bible and said, oh, I'm going to marry someone who's not saved. Oh, I thought you were saved. Well, you got to find out. Just because your Bible's closed and you don't read it doesn't mean, oh, I, I, you're going to steal hell to it because you can open it. You can read it. People don't realize that. And thy poor with judgment. So one of the things that a king will do and Jesus is going to do, you're going to judge. And I can imagine a smart ass walking up to, uh, uh, to Solomon and walking up to Jesus. Judge not, you should be judged. <laughs> You're not going to walk up to Jesus and say that. Maybe Solomon, but who you give you the right to judge? And the thing is, poor. You can't have a prejudice against the poor people. You can't rule in their favor because they're poor. And you can't rule against them because they're poor. If that man is poor and he's guilty, he's guilty. And whatever the judgment says. And if that man is innocent and the rich guy and the favorite guy is guilty, then the favorite rich, he's got to go by the law. And in any nation, any government of the world history, who has been the low downcast of the people? The poor. The mountain shall bring peace to, thy, to the people. I have no idea. And the little hills by righteousness. Now, I know Jesus Christ is going to set foot on the Mount of Olives and it's going to split, but how that's going to give peace, how a mountain is going to give peace to Solomon. And Solomon's kingdom was peace. There was no war during Solomon's kingdom. Now, he had some uprisings, but there was no war. So, verse 3, I don't know. He shall judge the poor of the people. Who? Solomon. He. Who? Jesus. Jesus said, you have the poor always with you. The money can't, there, there's no more courage. Oh, everything's great. Everything's wonderful. And if this is a tag to Jesus Christ, Jesus said, you'll have the poor always with you. Where? Also in the millennium. Poor ends... Revelation 21. After the great white throne judgment. I'm going to assume with that statement that it could be Solomon or it could be Jesus Christ. Or both. There will be poor people in the millennium. Solomon has... He shall say the children of the needy. Who? Solomon. That person needs help him out. That person has need. They were swindled. They were deceived. You put that guy to the punishment. You be churned. 
There was a woman that uh, Elijah, who had the oil and the, the mix that, that never dried up, and her son w died and was resurrected. And and Elijah told her, he said, "Listen, get out of here. There's a great famine coming. Get out, go." And she got word later on when the famine was coming over, and she went before the king, and. Uh, it just happened by chance, yeah, right, just by chance, that uh, the servant Elijah is talking to the king. He said, you know, you won't believe what Elijah did. What did he do? Man, he, he, the oil and the crew, there's never, it, he, I peeked in that barrel every once in a while. I was let down, and then her son died, and he wrote, king, what? That's the woman. what she want? Give her her property back. Give her her property back. And... There's going to be needy in the in the millennium. And I don't think there are going to be people on the street corners begging. And if there are, they're sure not going to deceive you. Those people, that, if they're going to be beggars, I don't think there is going to be. But you would know definitely for sure that they have a need. Because if they weren't, they'd be charged by the Christians who have reigned. They would be charged by the apostles above them. And they'll be definitely charged by the Lord Jesus Christ. But under Solomon, he's going to have people that have need. And shall break in pieces the oppressor. Now, did Solomon obey that? 1 Kings 12, 4. 1 Kings 12, 4. He became an oppressor. Solomon has died. His son is on, a, on, the, on the throne, Rehoboam. Jeroboam comes up to Rehoboam. Verse 4, chapter 12. Thy father, Solomon, made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make, thy, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter. Solomon did not listen to David, his father. And the Bible says that he took people to tribute, he taxed them, he put a levy on them, so he could build a temple in all his house. And the people were overburdened. I don't know if, if it was hard enough as Exodus, but they come, hey, come to the Rehoboam, the, the son, please relieve us. And I'm going to assume that they were made poor by the government of Solomon. He taxed them. He took their families, took the workers of the family. They shall fear thee as long as thou, as long as the sun and moon endure. Who's the thee? Solomon. Jeroboam just told, man, we feared him, but we had no power over him. Jesus Christ. The sun and moon are still there when Christ is reigning in the millennium. Are we going to fear God and Jesus Christ when in the eternal in New Jerusalem? Why would we need to fear Him? There'll be no evil and no sin. We're not going to do wrong. We're going to turn the fear into reverence and glorification of God and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It won't need to be a fear. And the sun and moon are gone. Revelation 20. The earth is gone. You know what David is? David's a prophet. He's a prophet for his son. And he's a prophet for the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's a king. And David entered into some of the offices of the priests. He ate the showbread, which is commonly, and Jesus even said, it was not for common man to eat. David's one of those men, really type of Christ. Prophet, king, and priest. Solomon looks like that too. Solomon is a king. He prophesied. And there's a couple of places in the scriptures. Did he do the offering? And there's one point he said he offered incense. In his temple. And if he went in that temple and offered incense. It's hard to read. And there's one point he said he offered these offerings. Then. If it was Solomon and he didn't get leprosy, if you know what I'm talking about in the scriptures. And he didn't freak out the priests in there if you didn't know I was talking about the scriptures. 
that Solomon is also a priest. Jesus Christ, king. Not yet, though. Prophet. Man, he spoke prophecies. Tribulation period, the millennium. He, he spoke, he cried over the city. He said, oh, in 70 AD, he didn't say the day. But he said, in 70 AD, the city is going to be destroyed. And priest. He went in through the holies of holy and just tore the, the, <laughs> tore the, the veil. Okay, now you have access. You don't need the, blues, the blood of bulls and goats no more. You need my blood. And I'll bring the petition before my father. Throughout all generations. And Solomon raised many generations. Generations of millennium, a thousand years. That's many generations. <coughs> Remember I told you about that rain, that, that early and latter rain? It's when Jesus comes in the millennium. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass. There it is. Micah chapter 5. What's that for Solomon? The rain was a blessing. The rain was like, oh, we need it. We need it for the crops. What's he saying about Solomon? We need him. He's beneficial. What are you saying about Jesus? We need him. He's beneficial. As showers that water the earth. What's that? Fills the troughs. It fills the wells. In his days shall the righteous flourish. Solomon. It said that there was gold like rocks and silver like rocks. It said that Solomon, his, I think it was all silver, his drinking vessels, or all, all gold, nothing diverse. I mean, the brass, and it was just no number. And then when it comes to Jesus Christ, the Christians, the apostles, the children of God, Israel, we're just going to flirt. We're just going to rejoice and going to be greatness and holiness. Abundance of peace. So long as the moon endureth. Like I said, Solomon had a reign of peace. There were no wars. He had conflicts, but there were no wars. Jesus Christ, 1,000 years, no war. After the millennium, what happens? The moon, the stars, and, the, and all the universe <laughs> rose up and burned through a fervent heat. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea. Solomon. Mediterranean Sea, Jordan River. It goes as far as, I believe, the Euphrates River, all the way down south to the Dead Sea. Jesus Christ. His reign from sea to shining sea. Take that off, America. That belongs to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is not going to sit on the throne of David in America. You got to stop making America your heaven. And from river unto the end of the earth. That would be the Jordan River. And that was Solomon's reign. As far as the reign of Jesus Christ, Revelation 1 8, 3 21 and 22, verses 1 through 5. Matter of fact, you know, at the end of the earth, we get a, Jesus Christ gets a new earth. Not this cesspool has been perverted and cursed. And they that dwell in the wilderness. Remember we spoke about the wilderness in the, in the millennium? It, it's going to be a place of, of crops. It's going to be a place of animals. Not, not now. Shall bow before him. Who? Solomon? He's the king. You bow down before the king. I think, and I'm not sure, but I think when the Queen Elizabeth, I think you, if you were to be in the presence of Queen Elizabeth, I think, you, I think you're supposed to bow down before her. I'm not too sure about that. Things may have changed. You know what's wrong with America? We have a leader called the president. I don't care who, who, what president. When do you ever bow down before him? I believe the Apostle Paul, when he dealt with Felix and he dealt with, with Caesar, I bet you he bowed down before him. I know Jesus wanted to know. 
Paul and Peter says you're supposed to respect the ruler. You're supposed to obey them. And what do you think they're going to happen to Jesus? Every knee shall bow, the Bible says. And his enemy shall lick the dust. Well, I don't know about Solomon on that one. Because Jeroboam came up and, and rose up over him. And there were a couple other adversaries. Actually, they outlived Solomon. But Jesus Christ, you know that the curse is removed off the earth except for one being in the millennium. And God said to that serpent, curse it be, uh, so many words, that you're going to eat the dust. And that serpent, does, the Bible says he will be eating the dust in the millennium. That old serpent still has that curse. Everything else, the curse is removed. The kings of Tarshish. Now, verses 10. Are these going to be nations in the millennium? I don't think this goes this far. I think this is Solomon. The kings of Tarshish. Isn't that where uh, Jonah went or tried to go? They say that's up towards Spain, that area. And of the isles of the Mediterranean Sea shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba. Well, we know about the queen of Sheba. And Seba shall offer gifts. Now, presents are, they are given for an occasion. A specific time that you would give a president a present a gift is it could be general hey I just bought you a gift I, you know I just bought you some chocolate and I got me a, I got me a chocolate bar and I got you a chocolate bar what's this this is a, it's our anniversary I got you a present so it's gonna be set dates to bring Solomon and they're gonna be set dates to bring to Jesus three times a year the male shall appear before Jesus in the Millennium and then there are going to be people who are going to just bring Jesus gifts because you're Jesus. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him, Solomon. What about Jesus, king of kings? That's us. That's when we be kings. That's the only time that Jesus spoke about king of the church when we become kings. And it was like we're going to fall down before him in the millennium. And all nations shall serve him. Ah. All nations. All the known nations of, of Solomon. And David. But not the Incas. Not the Native Americans. They don't even, weren't even known. But Jesus Christ. All nations. And who are the nations? Those that helped the Jews. For he shall deliver the needy when he cried. Definitely the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, the, the, the Beatitudes when, you know, blessed the poor. But he shall deliver the needy when he cried. Did we not read in 1 Kings 12, 4 that, that they were crying out and Solomon wasn't listening? Neither would uh, Rehoboam listen. He said, you know, my father whipped you. I'm going to get scorpions after you. Oh, boy. That's definitely Jesus. The poor also. And him that doeth, and him that hath no helper. So there's a difference between needy and poor. You see that? And there's of the needy or the poor there's there's help but no one's helping them but we have needy poor and without helpers that's the three classes of people in that verse they're able to be helped but no one's giving them help I think, let's see, James, I think this is. I, I may be wrong. I may be going wrong on this one. James. Uh, speaking about faith. Here it is. James chapter 2, verse 15. 
Talk about no one to help. James 2.15. If a brother or sister, that's Christian or Jewish, be naked and destitute of daily food, poor and needy, they have a need. And one of you say to them, depart in peace, be ye warm and fill, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? There's a need, there's poor, and there, here's somebody who can help them out. He, he just sends them away with words. And he doesn't give them clothes, he doesn't give them food. There's a perfect example. They have no helper. Verse 13. Christ will be the helper. I mean, he's going to help the helpless. And those who are truly helpless. He shall spare the poor. There's the poor again and needy. Two different classes of people. What's the difference? I don't know. Can you have riches and not have something? Well, let me think for a moment. Oh, let's see. There are people out there, they got money. They have a house. Okay. And not a crucial thing you can live without it because some scoundrels are going out, going out there and bought all the toilet paper and you we went today and you go to the stores and you can't buy toilet paper now can you be rich and have a need yeah I need toilet paper someone out there has hoarded all the toilet paper are, are they helping them helping people no they're not there are people out there who can help others and they're not doing it. Then there are people who, I mean, I hate to use a great toilet paper, but there are people who have got a limited supply of toilet paper and they will help somebody who doesn't have any. There's a helper supplying a need and the, the person, the elderly person, I mean, they might have a good house, they may have food in the pantry, I mean, they might have food for their cat or their, their little dog, whatever it is, but they have a need. What's the need? I need toilet paper. You know, toilet paper's good. But, I mean, you can live without it. But someone out there stole it all. Well, bought it all. What's the poor? You come into someone's house and they ain't got no food at all. And, they, and the money they got just paid the bills. And when I grew up as a child, and it was true. There would be elderly people who would be eating cat food. Tuna fish was too expensive. That's a poor person. I believe that would be the thing. And shall save the soul of the needy. Well, who's that sound like? Let's look at Matthew 9, 36. Uh, evidently, Solomon did not do that. <laughs> Solomon taxed him. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew 9, 36 is a Jewish book. And... Solomon's over Jewish people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. There, there's a people who have nothing. They may have money in their pocket, but they ain't they're, they're no resources. And guess who relieved them? Jesus. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence. Is that salvation? Is that Solomon? Yes, that's not salvation. Somebody comes to King Solomon and says, Solomon, I know of this woman, and she has been deceived. You won't believe that scam that she fell for. And it sounded real. Sound familiar today in the world? They've been deceived by these telephone calls. They've been deceived by email. They've been deceived by mail. And Solomon the king, the ruler of the nation, steps in. 
and he gives that woman back her money, and he penalizes the people that deceive. Where is the government of America taking care of its people? Oh, you know, they're saying we have no more respirators, we have no more masks, we have no more gloves. The police and fire departments are running out of material. What's the police department doing with RVs for riot control? I saw Daytona Beach the other day, parking in the in the mirror. We don't. We haven't had a riot since I've been here since 2011. You can buy big fancy RV, and you can buy big fancy brand new pickup truck, and you can buy big fancy SUV, and you can give the, the police mayor and, and, and the, the police chief all this excess money, all that, and you can't fill the shelves ready for a crisis, any sort, any type. Well, when this crisis is over, I think the police chief, I think he should lose his job. I think he should sell all that extra junk or crap. I like that word. Auction it off, take that money, and fill up everything what you're supposed to fill, and keep those stockpiles stocked. And stop wasting money. King, this woman was done violence. She was raped. She was they they they, they uh, stuck her up. They robbed her of her money. You get those people, you find who those people are, you bring them before me, and you get that woman, you stand her before me. That guilty party gets it. I have the right to the fifth amendment. I'll give you a fifth amendment. I'll cut your mouth and your tongue right out of your mouth. Now you tell the king what you did. I got my. You ain't only right you got right now. I'll take your neck off right now. You know what American law system does? It allows a criminal to to be. Uh, I got rights. What's the worst you're going to do? You're going to put me in a place that, ha that has air conditioning, I get clothing, I get medical, I get three meals a day, I get heat, I get free TV, I can go to the exercise. Listen, I've been in prison ministry. I've been in those rooms. I've had, I've given, uh, 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 I've given my Bible study and my preaching. To, I've been in exercising rooms in the jail. I've been in the big cafeterias. And they sit there and complain because the seats are metal. Oh, poor baby. I'm sorry. You know what the laws, you know what the law, you know what the law, you know what the law, Solomon was supposed to obey the law. You know what the law was for some of those people when they committed those crimes? Ma'am, he robbed you? Yes. Can you prove it? She proves it. You are now her servant. And you're going to work X amount of years. Do you pay her what you stole from her? That's what you became a servant when you stole. I forgot where I went. Ah, uh, deceit and violence. Precious shall their blood be in his sight. Who? The people who have done violence, the people who have been evicted, the people who have been victimized. You were not supposed to have feelings for the criminal. Well, you know, he starred in movies and television. I don't care. Well, you know, he can shoot a, 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 ba a basketball in, in a hoop. I don't care. Oh, he's a congresswoman or man. I don't care. When do these people stand before Jesus Christ one day at the Great White Throne Judgment if they're lost? He shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. <coughs> That's definitely Solomon. Jesus? Maybe. Prayer also shall be made for him continually. Oh, how's that? How many born-again Bible-believing Christians during... The presidency of, ready, drum roll, you're ready for, for me to say it, uh, President Obama, did you pray continually for him? Oh, no, I pray for Donald Trump. What about when President Obama? Well, uh, you know, he would come. What did First Kings 12 say about Solomon? He wasn't a people pleaser. What did Paul and Peter do when they were under Nero? 
You got to learn church history, Christians, not American history. You need to learn church history. You need to read Fox's Book of Martyrs. I'm going to grab me a gun and I'm going to shoot, shoot, shoot. You read Fox's Book of Martyrs? They walk up to the faggots. You already know what a faggot is. Went up to it, kissed it in the name of Jesus, let themselves be tied and sang hymns till they burned in the flames. Said here, David said, for Solomon, for the king, for Jesus. You're to pray for him all. I, I don't know if you pray for Jesus, but pray he comes. Also shall be made for him continually prayers. And daily shall he be praised. Oh. Come on, Bible believers for President Obama. <laughs> Rulers. What about the Speaker of the House, Janet Pelosi? She definitely ain't praised. Yeah, I'll praise when I get a Republican. Then James says you're partial, and that's a sin. You're not going to get around it. Don't come looking to me. I, I guarantee a lot of people out there, don't go talk to him about politics. He's going to give you the Bible. Yeah, you might believe it. I have one man right now. He said, I ain't talking politics with you. You win with the Bible. Yeah. There shall be a handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. Okay, I, I, I read my three chapters. Uh, I'm done. Uh. Oh, you want me to explain that? Okay, I'm sorry. I just thought I'm done with my three words. Go on top of any mountain find where you find corn. Come on. Uh, what, what's that? Mount Everest. That's it. Go on top of Mount Everest, find corn. You'll find dead bodies. Dead bo bodies of people who climb that mountain, they use them as, as you know, guiding boats. Find, find corn up there. Now, where are you going to find corn on top of mountains when Jesus Christ comes? That's a millennial passage. Remember, we found out in the, in the wilderness there's going to be crops and going to be the, the hills are going to be filled with cattle and everything. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon. Now Lebanon was, a, was a, from what I understand, it was a fruitful, this is where they had the cedar tree. So it was a fruitful place. The mountains are going to produce fruit like Lebanon. You ever see paintings of mountains? It, 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 there's white stuff on top of mountains. <clears throat> and they of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth. Not in cities of the worlds today. You look at some of the pictures of the cities of the world, like India, the Orient, if I can say that, China. You ever look at one of the places where they buy meat? You know? It's like, oh, you're getting more flies than you are getting beef. You look at the slums. They ain't going to be like that in the millennium gonna be people all around in the cities won't be quarantined his name shall endure forever how about Solomon does not David still keep his name when Jesus reigns in the millennium so guess Solomon's too Solomon and David Old Testament saints are not told they're gonna get a brand new name like the Christians So I hope Habakkuk likes his name because it looks like he's going to keep Habakkuk. But also whose else name is going to be forever? Jesus. His name shall continue as long as the sun. There's no sun in the, in the New Jerusalem. So maybe the Jewish people will get a new name. But Jesus Christ's name is going to be still the same forever. Where's the switch on that one? Where's the difference between Jesus and Solomon on that one? That's not Jesus. <laughs> and men shall be blessed in him. 
That's Jesus. There were men blessed by, by Solomon. Harem. That guy got rich. All the cedar trees he sent down and everything. Only problem he had, Solomon gave him some five city and he gave him. Ooh. What'd you give me New York City for? Why'd you give me LA for? He's a rotten city. You gave me Daytona Beach. Those are rotten cities. Ooh, he didn't like them. But there were people that brought the Queen of Sheba. Man, she came with, with, with spices. They said that, you know, were hard to find on. And Solomon sent her off with riches. That's Solomon. Men will be blessed by Jesus Christ in the millennium. All nations shall call him blessed. Now, who's that sound like? Blessed Redeemer. I forgot the rest of that. Happy. That's what blessed means. Solomon made some people happy. Jesus Christ is going to make people happy. They're going to, and listen, the Bible says that the, that the Gentile is going to go up to the Jewish person. Come, we're going to go with you to go with Jesus. We know he's, his name is upon His name is upon you. Come on, let's go. Blessed be, happy be the Lord God. Okay, we know who that is. The God of Israel, we know who that is. He came on his own, his own received him not. Guess who that is? Emmanuel, he, God dwells with us. Guess who that is? Who only doeth wondrous things. Yeah, that's the story of God since the beginning. All right, son, your turn. I, I, not really, I'm just, your turn, son. All right, Dad, watch this. I'm going to make Jupiter. Wow. That was good. I'll make a red planet. Mars. <laughs> hey, how's that? Pretty good. I'll tell you what, I, 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 I'll, I'll make these supernovas. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, this Hubble spacecraft, even I, when, I, when they send out new I, I look, it's amazing all the stuff that's out there, and no man can see it without Hubble, the, the, the telescope. Why are they out there? Because God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit love color. Like, they go down the bottom of the ocean, and I'm, I'm, I'm a fanatic of the Titanic. And every time they come up with these new videos and they go down, there's these little white crabs of star, something like that, all over the Titanic. Whoever saw that until they came up with these, these uni submarines? No one. God did. God did some one day said, okay, God, oh, starfish. Good job. Oh, those little, let wow, God, that's good. Father, watch this. Little white things that go on the Titanic at when it sinks. That's pretty. And they find all kinds of, of colorful fish in the bottom of the ocean. There are animals right now, they're still in 2020, let's say 2010, 2000, they're still finding animals that they never discovered before. And they're trying to say it's evolution. You ever see, you ever see the colors of birds? You ever hear birds sing? That's the wonders. That's the wonderful thing. And blessed, happy be his glorious name forever, Jesus Christ. Maybe Solomon. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. That's definitely Jesus Christ. Solomon didn't have any glory. And the only glory that Solomon is going to get one day is that God kept him alive. And God brought him into the millennium. And God will bring him into the new earth and new Jerusalem and the new heavens. But that glory doesn't belong to Solomon. It belongs to Jesus and God. Amen. My church don't say amen. And amen. How's that? That's David writing that. The prayers of David. Uh, wait a minute. I thought it was called a song. Has it not been called a song? Psalms are a song, they are a song, and they are prayers. And I wonder if God's recording our songs, our psalms, even though they're not in the Bible, God's recording our prayers. 
And if he is, Christian, how many songs does he have recorded by you? How many songs that you came up yourself for the Lord? The prayers of David, the son of Jesse. Those would be Solomon, the son of David, David, the son of Jesse. There's a family. Are ended. Okay, we're done with we're done with, with David. And we pick up a new new book. Book three. So there we are. 